Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in this lecture, we will quickly summarize the groups of Ornithischian dinosaurs. The Ornithischian dinosaurs are called the bird hipped dinosaurs since they exhibit a pelvis in which the pubis projects posteriorly, where it comes in contact with the ischium and has a prepubic process. The great vertebrate paleontologist Alfred Romer studied the Ornithischian pelvis and concluded that the new arrangement allowed for better abduction of the femur. This additional motion would help facilitate activities such as digging with the hind limbs, but perhaps more importantly, squatting over nests of eggs. In Saurischian dinosaurs found on nests of eggs, like Ovaraptor, the femurs are positioned in the sagittal plane right on top of the nest, rather than spread out on either side of the nest. The long feathers probably extended off of arms, which the Saurischian dinosaurs likely provided some insulation and protection to the eggs, rather than using their bodies, as with modern birds. The large sauropod dinosaurs appear not to have actively sat on their eggs like birds, but they lay them in mass at nesting sites. And there's fossil evidence for nesting sites filled with hundreds of sauropod eggs that have been found in South America and in Asia. In Ornithischians, the bird hip dinosaurs, the mothers could straddle the nest without the feet accidentally breaking them. Evidence of skin impressions indicate that the Ornithischian dinosaurs lack the long feathered arms that are found in the theropods, although some members were covered in fluffy fuzz. The oldest Ornithischian dinosaur is Les Sutusaurus from the late Triassic of South Africa. It was a small chicken sized dinosaur that exhibits the classic Ornithischian hip. The dinosaur also exhibits another feature of the Ornithischian dinosaurs, and that is a predenary bone. This little bone is found on the anterior tip of the lower jaw, and they may have supported a horny beak or Ramphia theca. In the early Jurassic upper portion of the Elliott Formation of South Africa is another early Ornithischian dinosaur called Heterodontosaurus, which is a slightly larger goose or turkey sized dinosaur. It featured a unique dental row of teeth that included molar like chewing teeth and larger canine teeth in front, giving the dinosaur two different types of teeth and hence their name meaning different toothed lizards. They were likely herbivores or omnivores and they never got much larger than a goose. The Heterodontosauridae, as a group, they survived into the Cretaceous with one of the most spectacular fossils from China, Taoyuleng, which uh, preserves dinosaur fuzz along the dorsal body. This fossil is the most feathered of the Ornithischian dinosaurs and suggests that fluffy dinosaurs were common in both groups, in particular the smaller members. In the Jurassic, several groups of Ornithischian dinosaurs gave up on the fluff and fuzz, and they evolved bony scutes. Now, bony scutes are common in many members of the archosaurs, but dinosaurs retained them or expressed them in varying degrees. The early Jurassic Scutiosaurus from the Cayenta Formation of Arizona is one of the first dinosaurs to feature bony scutes covering its body. The fourth dinosaur ever discovered and described by Richard Owen from 1863 is Scalidiosaurus, an armored dinosaur from Dorset, England, and was about the size of a large cow. The body was covered in armor or bony scutes or osteoderms. It was also quadrupedal, walking on four legs. During the Middle Jurassic, two groups of armored dinosaurs arose, the Stegosauria and the Ankylosauria. The Stegosauria included quadrupedal dinosaurs with rows of either spike-like or plate-like armor along their backs. 
They evolved and diversified during the late Jurassic, but are extinct by the early Cretaceous. They include Stegosaurus from Colorado and Utah, as well as Gigantospinosaurus from China with long shoulder spikes, and Kendosaurus from Tanzania in Africa, all of which are late Jurassic in age. The Ankylosauria are quadrupedal dinosaurs that are covered in dense armor or bony scutes. They are further divided into two families, the Nodosauridae and the Ankylosauridae, and are differentiated based on the degree of development of the acromion process on the scapula and the skull shape. Both groups were specialized diggers based on the muscle attachments for the deltoid muscles. They started out rather sheep-sized during the late Jurassic, but during the Cretaceous they got rather large, about the size of a Volkswagen Beetle. Some exhibited large spikes that would help protect them from the numerous carnivorous dinosaurs. They also have convoluted nasal passages that may have been used to snort out different vocal sounds. And some groups have a bony tail at the end of the tail used for protection during, during attacks. Now, not all of the Ornithischians were quadrupedal. The bony-headed Pachycephalosauridae from the Cretaceous were bipedal dinosaurs with bony heads that they used for combat with each other like modern-day rams. These dinosaurs featured large dome heads, and they are related to the large group of dinosaurs called the Ceratopsia. The early Ceratopsidae were small bipedal dinosaurs like Yilong from the late Jurassic of Asia, or Aqualops from the early Cretaceous of North America. The best known early bipedal Ceratopsia is Cetacosaurus from Asia, where many skeletons have been found and impressions of this chicken-sized Cetacosaurus shows that it was covered in long, fibrous hair along the tail. During the early Cretaceous, the Ceratopsia became quadrupedal and expanded their head crest. The early Protoceratops from Mongolia was a common pony-sized dinosaur, and during the late uh, Cretaceous, the group quickly diversified into numerous species, some of which became very, very large and featured horns on their frills and on their skulls. These later and larger Ceratopsia include Staracosaurus and Triceratops. The Ceratopsidae were some of the last dinosaurs to live on Earth, and they all died out at the end of the Cretaceous. The last group of Ornithischian dinosaurs are the Ornithopoda, a very diverse group of large bipedal dinosaurs which became successful in large part because of their complex chewing jaws and teeth. They were large herbivores of the late Jurassic and Cretaceous. The most famous member is Iguanodon, which is found in the early Cretaceous rocks of Europe and one of the first dinosaurs ever discovered. The group also includes Edmontosaurus from the late Cretaceous of Canada and Marasauria from Montana, which shows parental care in preserved nesting sites in Montana. Some members of the Ornithopoda developed large head crests like Corotheosaurus and Parasaurolophus. Like the Ceratopsian dinosaurs, they lived during the late Cretaceous and were some of the last dinosaurs on Earth before the end Cretaceous extinction. All right, you should be able to summarize the groups of Ornithischian dinosaurs, the Heterodontosauridae, Stegosauridae, Ankylosauridae, Ceratopsidae, and the Ornithopoda. If you'd like to learn more about dinosaurs, check out my playlist of dinosaur videos associated with my online class on the natural history of dinosaurs. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin slash burger.org. Links are found in the description below.